It's Momo Monday, your weekly dose of adorableness and reflection. So let's do our breathing while we watch Momo wrestle with a kitten. Breathe in. And out. And breathe in. And out. Now, one thing Momo does not like is bullying, but it happens a lot. And there has been a lot of discussion about it online and in the news. And this wonderful game fell in my lap. It's a game called Hero Boy. It's a game from a very small studio called Crown Demon Studios, and uh, I sampled it at a anime convention in Hamilton. Uh, and I really liked it, so I said, please give me a code when it's out. It's out now. And this is a glorious game. You can watch it and kind of listen to it while I'm talking about bullying. But it is the story of a little boy, Max, who's bullied in school. You'll, you'll see that coming up. And it's all about how he uses imagination to psychologically cope with being picked on. And I think that this is a very timely message for today because I know that I've been struggling with a lot of the stuff that's been going on in the news of late because it seems very unfair. And it's easy to tune out from the concept of fairness uh, when you're dealing with politicians and rich and powerful people. But there are still dynamics at play that if we don't take them exceptionally seriously, they affect regular people. And my big question going forward has been, how can we teach kids that bullying is wrong? when it's been shown to be so effective in politics. And kids are watching this stuff. Kids as young as eight are really engaged in this election for various reasons. But, uh, you know, kids at that age are dealing with this kind of stuff. Bullies taking their lunch money and so on. Kids picking on them for their hair, their clothes, the way they talk, the way they look, you know. And this is really sending messages that are going to take us a really long time to know the impacts of. And, and and you see, he, you, the game starts with this sort of fight you can't win, which I really like, like from a programming perspective floor. because you, you probably couldn't see Max it here, but the experience of going, oh my God, there's four guys. And you might've seen, I tried Max to run out of the room and everything bad. like that. Uh, this is the point I should mention there. Max the first death I took reading. in this was due to kitten. The second death was just Max a keyboard imagine. fumble. I wasn't paying attention. So you can, you could see that. Um, the pirates but have stolen it, our treasure. It is a Go, difficult challenge to the for ship. us. And this is why I think this game the is absolutely I will so glorious. Um, oh. there, there's some nitpicky things about it, but the neat thing about the combat is that every attack has this really simple kind of um, mash combo to it if you're if you're tapping the button it, it does like a little stomp or like a little right there a little multiple punch or something like that um but it's still quite challenging but the the whole concept behind it i i just think is the good kind of feels in video games because i know when i was a kid i did exactly what this kid did when i was being picked on and not, not only was I expected to protect myself, I was expected to protect my younger sister as well. By whom, I'm not entirely sure, but I just had this intense sense of expectation that I was supposed to look out for, like, you know, older siblings should. But as a kid, and as, especially as, you know, a girl in the 1980s, I, I didn't know how 
There, there were a lot of examples for boys about how to do that, but I, I didn't know how, so I kind of doped it out, and I did it by using fictional characters, tropes, for lack of a better term. And tropes get attacked a lot in video games, but they can be a force for good as well, right? For me, it was Thundercats and Transformers and Star Wars. And I was always a Luke girl. I was not a Han girl because Luke got no freaking love, but Luke was doing all the difficult, important stuff. Well, Han was kind of along for the ride and just kind of getting a getting all the glory. But, you know, uh, and, and the girl, because the only girl was not related to him and was related to Luke. But I digress. Um, it, you know, the thing about Luke Skywalker is he has to go through that really hard process of not just physical training, but questioning his own assumptions about the world and, and who he is and where he came from and all that stuff. And we don't deal nearly enough with that anymore and stuff. It's it's really glossed over in a lot of stuff. I saw Doctor Strange on the weekend and it was all, oh, you have to, you have to be vulnerable and you have to, all these morals. But the reality is in, in the film, he spends like five minutes training and then he does the circle circle thing and the but um bum he's awesome this is the way because of film pacing it's not like in star wars where i mean luke wasn't really a trained jedi until the third film and that's very hard to do nowadays with modern movie structures but it made you feel more like he had to work for it right like, he had to get good and level up. And I don't like this modern paradigm that you're expected to start as good with things. I, I prefer more little stories with, you know, this little kid. And what I love mechanically about this game, even though it's very simple... First of all, I, I love the art style. I love that it's told from a kid's perspective. But also, it is pretty challenging the you'll see a boss fight in a bit but it's one of those old-fashioned ones where you have to repeat a certain a naturally challenging step to defeat the boss those are the kind of boss fights i like and it is easy to fumble but that that's the mechanics of learning in life this idea that you know gaming is shifting with the casual market and the free-to-play in-app purchase model that instead of you know the the tradition of gaming that i am familiar with which is get good keep playing a level until you until you beat it and that includes battletoads and ninja gaiden or you give up those are your options there is no um way that isn't cheating to get through but now with games like candy crush and the like the whole goal is to weight the game more like the old coin op games with a twist in the coin op games it just gave you a chance to play the level again putting more money in for those who don't know coin op games were deliberately weighted to spike in difficulty so you had to put more money in every so often it would lull you to a false sense of security and then spike in difficulty now, these cell phone games do the exact same thing, these mobile games, but the whole idea is pay 99 cents to skip this level or pay 99 cents to get, you know, this currency that allows you to get extra moves or extra things. That's not get good. That's game the system with money to get an edge. And when you start talking about the morals that teaches and some people are going to say i'm overthinking this but hear me out when you think about the morals that teaches people even adults instead of it being look just stick with something because it is possible it is possible to to achieve this it is possible to overcome this through effort and time and work and failing a lot until you get good now it's oh for 99 cents you can bypass all that hard work and that was the legit death <laughs> um but that 
is a completely different moral paradigm. And by moral, I mean the moral of the story, right? Game companies in casual games, or mobile games, because they're not supposed to call them casual anymore, are encouraging people to cut corners. And I know how much I was influenced the other way with gaming, encouraging me to stick to things, to not give up, to don't quit, because if you put enough time in, you will get better, you will get good enough to achieve. I wonder what the other thing is encouraging in people. And I don't really know. I can only guess. And I'm willing to say that because I'm trained not to cut corners by video games. But uh, you, you will see me uh, beat this incredible pirate captain. And perhaps I should um, say why I think this sort of matters in terms of bullying. Because learning to really overcome unfair situations and bullies is a very painful process that requires that you acknowledge your own mistakes sort of your own accountability in the situation so it, you, it can get better and you can get out of it without blaming yourself or beating yourself up it's this weird thing of realizing you made a mistake without going into that idea of you did something bad. Mistakes are not always bad. They're part of learning, right? And if you continue to beat yourself up, well, you're just helping the people looking to beat you up too, right? I mean, that's, that's a big learning thing. And you have to get into that place of, of confidence and sort of self-worth that one mistake or a collection of mistakes does not make you worthless. And I'll talk more about this later because this is almost done. But uh, I, I adore this game. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm just saying I absolutely adore it. It, it makes me warm and fuzzy inside. And I suggest you give it a try because it's really not very expensive and you're helping out a very small indie developer. And this game itself, just to pull back the curtain a little bit, was an example of a game that came out of a, a more ambitious project that didn't get funded for various reasons. And I, I really want to believe that this is the game this studio was intended to sort of make by the universe kind of thing, because it is just so charming and, and so emotional without tugging at your heartstrings. It just, it just tells its story in this really innocent way. And it's awesome. So I recommend this just from, this is the good kind of indie feels game, like give it a try. Um, but back to Momo and his adorable fluffiness and send Momo good vibes. We're still struggling medically with him, but, uh, we're going to finish off by doing our breathing. Just be surrounded by the softness and breathe in. And out. And breathe in. And out. 